Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Well, it turns out it's Michigan after all. Winter has come overnight. I've got my trusty yardstick, the melodic sound of snowblowers. And Brandon, it is cold and snowy out here. Cold and only getting colder. We are tracking a bitter cold Arctic air mass awaiting. Plus, the heavy snow contributes to at least two deaths in our area. Those deaths top our news at noon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Evrod Kasimi, a 70 year old man from Canton Township and a 55 year old man from Rochester Hills. Both died while snow blowing or shortly after. The Rochester man is believed to have died from a heart attack and neither of the men have been identified just yet, but autopsies are expected to be done and will determine an exact cause of death. Health experts are urging you to take your time while shoveling or even while you're snow blowing. And of course, you want to stay hydrated as well and don't work yourself to the point of exhaustion. In the meantime, we continue to track our weather here in this area. Brandon is on hand with a look at possible bone chilling temperatures that are on the way. Paula is in Waterford this afternoon where people are digging out of the snowstorm and kids are enjoying a snow day. Plus our Priya man is in Plymouth where people are digging out. We'll start there with Priya. How's it looking over there? I see a lot of snow behind you, Priya. Evrod, it is beautiful. Take a look at this winter wonderland. You know, there's something magical about that first snowfall when the snow is white and crisp. It is just beautiful out here, but there was a lot of busy folks this morning digging out. Let's take a look at some video from just a short time ago. This is from Ann Arbor, the Upper Water Hill community. And you know, Ann Arbor was one of the areas hardest hit by the storm yesterday, which was really an all day event, dumping almost a foot of snow in some places. Ann Arbor got about 10 inches of snow throughout the day yesterday. Uh, I spoke with one man who told me that he used his snow, blow snow blower three times yesterday and was still digging out this morning. Uh, take a listen to what he had to say. I should have got out last night while it was fluffy and zoomed through the neighborhood and removed this. You know, living in Michigan, you have to expect this. You know, if we didn't get snow in Michigan, I, I would think we wasn't in Michigan. <laughs> But he also said we had a pretty decent November and he is not complaining. You know, a lot of school closures today with this first really heavy snowfall of the season. And I'm not the only reporter looking at what people are dealing with today. Let's turn it over to Paula Tuffin. She is in Waterford where people are also digging out this morning. Hey Priya, I have my trusty yardstick. And so on one side of the street in this Waterford neighborhood, it says about 10 and a half inches or so. Mostly it measures about 10 inches. You can see already folks digging out, brushing off, trying to get out of here. On the other side of the street, it was actually a little closer to right here, Chester. I think it was really closer to about eight and a half. And then also I got measurements of about nine and a half inches. Clearly, this is a neighborhood where you do not want to eat the yellow snow. We found the crawl family. Instead of making a snowman, they're making a snow fort. But honestly, guys, this really gives you a real indication of the kind of snow you have. And it is very, very heavy and it is very, very damp. And that means it's very, very difficult to shovel if you don't have a snowblower. I'll probably go out halfway, take a rest, go back inside, and then I'll do the rest mm -hmm. later. Hey, guys. It snow's wet, so it's heavy. Yesterday it was nice and light and zip right through it, but today it's a little uh, heavier. Sorry about that. So you have to be very, very careful in this kind of snow. Again, it is very, very damp. It is very, very heavy. Obviously, it's something that the kids enjoy as well as the adults if you have children. But if you are shoveling this stuff, even snow blowing it, you have to protect your face so that you're not breathing in that cold air and you've got to take it in small, small increments. Everard, back to you. Man, oh man, it looks like they're having a lot of fun out there though with the dogs and the kids.
Uh, thankfully, though, the snow has finally stopped. Brandon, after what? Seemed like 24 hours of this mess? Yes. Yep, and, and uh, it broke at the right time, and then we had temperatures early this morning that actually warmed up. We were around 35 degrees, so we're getting some good melting on the streets, which was very, very helpful for anybody who had to go to work. But quick look back from the 24 hours of snow and the big winter, White Lake, almost a foot of snow, at least over 11 inches. Wyandotte, almost 11 inches. Romulus out at the airport where they had massive problems yesterday, 10.7 inches. Grand Blake, Nine and a half. Howell, 8.7. I have healthier uh, snow totals to show you in just a few minutes, but we'll get you set for the rest of the day today. And we're looking at temperatures in all four zones dropping. We mentioned middle 30s early this morning. We're down to 34 at Metro Airport in our Metro Zone, 32 Ann Arbor, 29 in Pontiac. It's 31 right now in Adrian. And the wind chills in the middle teens to low 20s. The winds are whipping out there west 10 to 25 miles an hour and that'll be the case throughout the rest of the day so unlike normal our temperatures will be falling through the afternoon and we do have a few hints of sunshine which at least makes it feel good for the kids out there on this snow day playing in the snow just make sure they are bundled up again wind chills teens to low 20s we are uh, tracking a cold front that has already gone through and so we're dealing with some of the colder winds right now behind that and all all of our wet weather has gone elsewhere, so no more snow today. But tomorrow we're tracking an Arctic air mass on its way, and we'll have details of what looks like some snow squalls and very dangerous wind chills. We'll have that coming up. In the meantime, we've got your four zone weather updated. If you have to head out the door, everything updated right there for you. Your neighborhood seven day forecast. Find your zone on the weather tab. Click on Detroit.com. Brandon, thank you. Winter weather pounding the Midwest now and other parts of the country, and that's really just the tip of the iceberg. And an iceberg really is how much of the country is going to be feeling by the end of the week with temperatures 20 degrees below normal. Now, the storm that slowly swept across Michigan on Sunday moved towards the East Coast overnight. Roads across Massachusetts turned hazardous as they were here with more than four inches of snow falling with then rain expected later today. And we know what happens when you mix in some rain. After seven to nine inches of snow fell in Minneapolis over the weekend, many people living there got outside to enjoy sledding and cross country skiing, some with the kids, some with the animals. Sunday was the time to get outside though in Minnesota because today's high temperature is 10 degrees and tonight the temperatures are going to fall to five below zero. The storm picked up extra moisture on Sunday when it moved over at Lake Erie and dropped more than a foot of snow around Jamestown, New York, which is just south of Buffalo. Five or more additional inches are expected sometime today. And we are following a developing story for you now out of Waterford Township, where police are working to solve a home invasion case. This happened late in the morning of November 18th, long before any snow fell on Hillcliff Drive, north of Highland Lake and Elizabeth Lake Roads. A light colored car seen backing into the driveway of a home where a TV and other items were stolen. If you have any information about the car or this case, you're asked to call Waterford Township Police. And a search continues for Danielle Stislicki. She's the Farmington Hills woman who's been missing for over a week now. Police saying that Danielle vanished in the afternoon on December 2nd after leaving her job in Southfield. Her Jeep was found later locked outside of her apartment with her purse, her ID and credit card still inside. The family insisting, though, that she wouldn't just disappear and they fear that she's been kidnapped and is being held against her will. There is a reward of about $125,000 that's now being offered for any information that leads to Danielle's whereabouts. A federal judge in Pennsylvania now has rejected a bid by the Green Party to recount votes in Pennsylvania's presidential election. And in rejecting the bid, the judge said that there was no credible evidence that the vote count was hacked. The Green Party's candidate, Jill Stein, got about 1% of Pennsylvania's votes. The counts stopped a recount, or the courts rather, stopped a recount effort here in Michigan. U.S. Senate leaders are promising an investigation into CIA reports, though, that Russian hackers tried to interfere with the presidential election. Today, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said that an inquiry would be done by the Senate Intelligence Panel. A bipartisan group of senators is already calling for an investigation into the Kremlin. The president-elect Donald Trump waved off the CIA hacking reports, calling them ridiculous.
Still to come here on Local 4 News at noon, tracking terrorists. Today, forces moved quickly to conduct a series of anti-terrorism terrorism raids. We'll tell you where when we come right back. Today, families and government leaders overseas are working to pick up the pieces after a deadly weekend. A wave of terror attacks ripping through major cities starting in Istanbul, Turkey. And here's what we know. Late Saturday night, twin blasts killed at least 44 people, mostly police officers, and injured 155 others. A Kurdish militant group is claiming responsibility for the attack. Funerals started today as hundreds flooded the city streets to mourn and pay their respects to the victims. Turkish officials say 13 people are now under arrest in connection with that attack. And in Egypt now, the president declaring a three-day period of mourning after a bombing at a Christian church in Cairo. Funerals took place this morning for the 25 worshipers killed at the church next to Cairo's main cathedral, and at least 49 were injured there. An employee at the church says that they saw someone walk into the church and left a, a package. Police in Egypt have been battling extremists since the military took over in 2013. So far, no one has claimed responsibility for that attack. And turning east now to Somalia, where an official says that a bombing in the nation's largest city was a direct attack on police. It happened in the capital city of Mogadishu. Investigators say that a car bomb was driven into the main entrance of a port, killing nearly 20 people and injuring 15 others. A Somali-based militant group with ties to al-Qaeda has reportedly claimed responsibility for the attack there. And British security forces moved quickly today to conduct a series of anti-terrorism raids. Reports say police arrested five men and one woman in a series of raids in London and central England. Police gave no specifics, but said that those arrested were suspected of planning an act of terrorism. Recent reports said that the Islamic State has been planning terrorist attacks against Britain and its allies. Here closer to home now, those who lost their lives in the Pulse nightclub attack continue to be remembered. Survivors, family and staff members gathered in private at Pulse nightclub in Orlando, Florida on Sunday. And that marks the six month anniversary of the shooting that killed 49 people. A moment of silence was held and the victims names were also read aloud in their honor. We're going to keep fighting and we're going to come keep speaking up and we're going to keep speaking love in their names and we're never going to let them be forgotten here in Orlando and across the globe. Yeah, they certainly will all be remembered. Two more vigils are going to be held later today. One will be held at the Orlando History Center. The other one is scheduled for Pulse nightclub this evening. Still to come here at noon, Hollywood all a buzz this afternoon as the nominations are out for the 74th annual Golden Globe Awards. And there's one movie in particular, Brandon, that's already stealing the show. And we have some big news to talk about. Winds right now 10 to 20 out of the west. They are creating wind chills in the teens and 20s, but even stronger wind and colder air in the seven day. We're talking dangerous cold and snow squalls. He was a young family man who found success working at Chrysler. He was passionate about cars, just like his grandfather. They shared a unique bond. We got the phone call. We rushed to the uh, place where he was robbed. Until one night when he was gunned down at a party, murdered over a pair of Cartier glasses. She said, Book is gone. They done shot him. They shot him. Tonight at 11, who shot this young man eight times and what they left behind at the crime scene that even investigators found puzzling. Think you found the severe weather alert is over and it doesn't necessarily mean great things. The snow that we have is not going anywhere. It's going to continue to stack up in spots throughout the week. Not a nonstop week of snow, but here's a quick look back at Sunday. We had the big winner in Mount Clemens in Macomb County, 11.6 inches there, 11.2 in Ann Arbor and St. Clair Shores, about 11 inches, 10 inches in Dundee. We had 10 inches in Lapeer, 10 inches, uh, more than 10 inches at Romulus at Metro Airport. Uh, I mentioned Lapeer, Port Huron was near 10, Gross Point near 10, and Livonia checking in at 9, while uh, again, Dundee down 
down in Monroe County had 10. So it was a very widespread coverage of this 8 to almost 12 inches of snow. And right now we have the fresh snowpack 34 degrees still above freezing, but the winds are west at 16 and that knocks the feels like number down to about 24 and that's important for all of the kids who are home heading out to make the snowman and have the snowball fights. We need to make sure everybody's got the double layers on good to go through the day because that wind can get you after a while. 33 degrees temperatures falling through the afternoon going the wrong way and feeling even cooler than that upper teens to low 20s with those west winds that are not going to relent much, but it gets better as we head into the evening hours and overnight still 19 degrees with any clearing that's going to allow temperatures to really cool off and wind chills likely in the single digits in spots early on your Tuesday morning. Here's the first cold front that came through already. So we're in the heels of this or on the backside of it, we are getting cooler air, but it pales in comparison to this chunk of cold air that's going to sink down here late tomorrow and make misery for us on Wednesday. Here is a look at the computer model. Again, it shows a little bit of breakage here, so at times partly sunny. Tomorrow, again, pre-cold front, a few very spotty light snow showers. Don't count on much for this. Starting in the early morning and maybe coming in a couple of different waves. Very light stuff, but always tricky nonetheless. And then that cold air is going to promote some lake enhanced or lake effect snow squalls. We're talking near 30 degrees tomorrow, but on Wednesday we're in the teens. Sub zero wind chills possible Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Look at these numbers and the snow squalls on Wednesday will likely be the worst and we remember last week the danger of those so watch out if you have any travel plans on Wednesday you're going to need the radar with you or rethink your plans going to be a real chilly middle of the week. Alrighty, Brandon, we have been warned. Award season is officially underway in Hollywood, and today we got our first look at the Golden Globe nominations. A romantic musical about life in Hollywood charmed the Hollywood foreign press this morning. La La Land, as it's called, has picked up seven nominations. A nominee for Best Musical or Comedy is Florence Foster Jenkins. That title role performance brought Meryl Streep her 30th career Globe nomination. So that is a huge accomplishment. And in TV, NBC's freshman hit, This Is Us, is up for Best Drama. If you haven't seen that, you definitely want to check that out. Jimmy Fallon is going to be hosting the awards. They're scheduled for January 8th. And, of course, you can watch them right here on Local 4. Still ahead here on Local 4 News at noon, Christmas has gone to the dogs, dare we say, as close to 200 pups come together for a holiday bash, and it's all for a good cause. We'll be right back. And finally here at noon in California, a huge, a huge group of French Bulldogs got the ultimate Christmas party. Close to 170 of these little pups hit the beach for the fourth annual <laughs> reindeer romp. The party included a costume contest and the opportunity to meet, well, jolly old Saint Nick. And who doesn't want to do that? Proceeds from the event benefit the French Bulldog Rescue Network. And the group provides medical care and other needs for Frenchies who are looking for a forever home. <laughs> I'm looking at the, the view there. It's so much warmer than it is here, right? Like, can we just hold this shot for a little while so we can remember what these warm temperatures used to feel like? Well, it's been that way in places where it should. In Florida, it's been very warm in the 70s and 80s. In uh -huh. California, they had the uh, Santa Ana winds blowing for a while, which are very warm winds. So it's where we need to be, yeah. at least mentally. I wonder if we can book a flight from Metro Airport to LA real quick. We're going to make some phone calls. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs>